I'm Nadia and um, I live and work in Amsterdam and I'm one of the people who's helped to organise the Climate Action Camp. Everyone who's, um, who's been involved in the kind of preparation process for the camp is involved in a number of different working groups because there have been very few of us um, involved in the camp. Um, and so there's working groups like logistics, um, meetings and facilitation, outreach, media, um, and then within the logistics group there's lots of um, smaller working groups within that. Um, I've been working primarily with um, the outreach group um, and also been doing obviously bits and pieces from other working groups as well. I'll start with security. Um, the security working group um, was organising to um, defend the camp in case the police came. Um, we were quite surprised. We were expecting a much bigger police presence than we had. Um, uh, the security group had organised to kind of warn the camp in advance of the police getting here um, and they maintained that um, through uh, preparing a rotor um, and people took on shifts, people from the camp, so everyone was involved in the actual um, uh, maintenance of that security throughout the week. Um, other working groups, there were the kitchen who came along and fed everyone, there was the working group who set up the toilets, the group who set up the sink, there was um, a group who uh, collected tools and organised the tools. Um, there was a meetings and facilitation group that um, planned the agenda for meetings and um, structured uh, the, the plenary meetings, um, structured the big discussions um, in a way that um, would most effectively bring out different people's ideas and different problems and solutions um, and come to decisions that everybody could be happy with. Um, there was the media working group that uh, put out press releases every day and did lots of um, interviews via telephone and for TV and for radio and newspapers and um, uh, escorted journalists around the site um, to show them the different parts of the site and that kind of thing. This camp is a response to, um, to climate change and to the way that governments and corporations um, are not dealing with the problem at all. Um, they are actually, governments and corporations at the moment are hijacking the climate change discourse um, and spinning it um, and using it as an excuse to um, save this financial system um, that has been collapsing, this kind of um, this mortgage and debt crisis um, has caused a lot of problems um, in the financial system and with the economy and we're going through a recession and governments and corporations seem to have identified climate change um, as uh, a good way to justify the um, expansion of privatisation, of land grabs, um, they've privatised the air around us, they've privatised the right to pollute carbon dioxide, um, they've created a new market out of this um, and they are um, both privately and publicly um, admitting now um, it's become reasonably relatively common um, among high level officials and businessmen to speak about how these carbon markets are not um, not reducing carbon dioxide pollution at all, they're having zero effect on that. But they are creating an awful lot of money for a lot of um, very powerful people. Um, and so it's kind of a, a, a double whammy here because um, the, the land grabs that are going on, um, the expansion of really dirty factories um, across the global south um, is, is damaging in itself. Um, the expansion of the privatisation and of carbon markets is damaging but then also because they're not solving the climate crisis climate change is also going to be incredibly damaging it's going to cause food shortages as there are droughts and floods across arable lands and um, it's going to cause water shortages um, as uh, glaciers finish melting and so fresh water sources um, become very scarce and so it's going to cause water wars in that sense. Um, deforestation rates are not um, being reduced but they're making a lot of money out of um, carbon markets, out of privatising forests. Um, so it's it's time now, it, it, the situation really demands that um, people who recognise the problem um, stand up and take action and do something about it because those people who we have put our trust in to do something and not doing anything. One of the key aims of the camp um, is education. It's creating a space where we can um, share the knowledge that we have, um, share our skills. Um, it's creating a space for discussion and debate so that we can... I mean, the, 
key one thing that we do say is that we don't have all of the answers but we're creating space where we can um, pool our knowledge and um, share our skills discuss debate and, and and try and come up with some answers um, and so we've had workshops here ranging from things as simple as the the science of climate change the most updated science so people know um, what the situation is we've had um, uh, workshops and discussions about what's at stake in Copenhagen at the COP15 uh, United Nations conference that's coming up in December. Um, we've had rocket stove making workshops, grey water, how to build a grey water system. Um, so everything from kind of uh, the political and economic, scientific, um, practical skills, um, sustainable living. Um, there's been a whole range of workshops and debates. Um, there aren't groups as a whole as such, but there's lots of individuals that come from other um, activist groups or campaign groups or, I mean, there's, there's builders, there's designers, there's architects, there's teachers, there's parents, there's people from uh, a, a completely diverse range of people have come and gotten involved in the, in the climate action camp. Um, some people have um, backgrounds in campaigning and activism and for some people this was the first time they've become involved in anything like this, they've recognised the problem and they've decided to take action. There's a, a number of reasons. Um, first off, the camp was made with an absolutely minimal amount of money. Um, there was no way we could afford to um, rent a piece of land. Um, but also, um, there are um, kind of political reasons and philosophical reasons for it as well. Um, and there's security reasons. The political and philosophical reasons are that land should be a common resource. Um, you shouldn't have to um, pay to use land. It's a, it, it creates a power relationship when one person has to rent something off another, rent the use of space. Um, and we believe that space should be available for us to create these kinds of camps. Um, in terms of security reasons, um, because the camp is a direct action camp, it is um, a political venture. Um, it's, it has proved in the past to not be possible to rent a piece of land because then the police know exactly where you're going to be and they can stop you before you get there. So th there are security reasons for it as well. Um, so there's financial, political security. There's, there's a lot of reasons why um, it made a lot more sense to us to, to squat a piece of land. Um, I think it's, I've really enjoyed it this week. It's been wonderful how everybody who's come along has um, immediately gotten involved in the process, um, <laughs> taken on responsibilities, gotten involved in the decision making and the working groups. Um, and it's been really great fun. And, um, and, of course, and of course the direct action, which was incredibly successful. We shut down the um, Antwerp bulk terminal for an entire day. They shut down operations there. There's um, 70,000 tonnes of coal comes in and out of there. Um, every single day it's shipped in from South Africa, it's shipped in from Colombia and it's then um, put onto trains which transport it around Europe or smaller ships that go to um, the UK and Scandinavia. Um, and people should get involved in the climate camp and they should come to Copenhagen. <laughs>